Okay, this is Mr. Priscilla continuing with my discussion of financial mathematics. We're primarily looking at annuity, uh, annuity formulas, future value, and periodic compound amount. Here's a really involved problem. If we look at the timeline, let's read through it. Find the final amount in the following retirement account in which the rate of return on the account and the regular contribution change over time. And that's a very sensible thing. It's very unlikely one person's going to deposit $500 a month into an account that pays 5% compounded monthly for 50 years. Okay? Usually those amounts deposited change and the interest rates change. So on this one, the person starts off depositing $578 a month into an account that pays 4% compounded monthly for seven years. Then they start, okay, maybe they got a pay raise or something, but they're going to start putting more money. Maybe they got a new job. They're going to start paying $775 a month into the account, and the interest rate has changed from 4% compounded monthly to 5% compounded monthly for another seven years. So the question is how much money will be in that account after 14 years? There's going to be three stages of this problem, or three parts to this problem. <coughs> oh, pardon me. I'll draw a timeline similar to what I did on the other one. It's a three-part problem. The first part is the $578 a month invested at 4% compounded monthly. Is that an annuity? Is there a series of equal periodic payments? Is there a, is this, yes, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is you'll use future value of an ordinary annuity. Well, why am I saying it's ordinary and not an annuity due? Well, at no place does it ever say the word beginning or annuity due. So if it doesn't say that, you're going to assume ordinary annuity. Okay? Then, there's a second step that you'll have to do, and that step is moving that amount of money forward. Okay? So this $578 sits in the account, or excuse me, $578 a month grows over seven years, and then it's going to sit in the account. There's a, that step is the step that most people forget. Why? Well, they want to just use two different annuity formulas. But no, the annuity formulas always assume the balance is starting at zero. Okay? So to move the money forward, you're going to use periodic compound amount formula. And what that's going to do is move this first amount forward those seven years. And I'm going to do that in red. Can y'all tell the difference in colors? Okay. And then there's still one more part. Let me see. Do I have a black pen? I'll do it in black, maybe. Is this a black pen? No, it's a blue pen. The last thing, the $775 a month, that 5%, that's another future value ordinary annuity. What we're going to get are two timelines. Starting off $578 per month. That's the payment. So that's the R value. Into an account that pays 4% monthly okay. 
for seven years. Then, then when the payments change that, and the interest rates change, that amount of money is going to keep growing at 5% compounded monthly for seven years. And we're going to start adding up the, 500, the $775 a month. Down here is the third part of the timeline. This part here is the $775 a month payments for that same period, seven years, 5% monthly. It's three parts. Future value of an ordinary annuity. Take that amount that you get and move it forward. That's going to get you a dollar amount right here. Then calculate the $775 a month for seven years. See what it grows to. That will get you an amount right here to get the total amount. You add those two together. Step four. You know, add uh, step two answer and step three answer. Am I writing this in invisible ink? That hard? Oh no, okay. So that's trying to show you the game plan for this problem. And it's how you'll do your problems eight and nine. Future value, ordinary annuity, periodic compound amount formula moves the money forward. Then future value, ordinary annuity for the second, uh, when it starts depositing the 775. The reason we've got to use this second thing here, and that's something that a lot of students forget to take into consideration, is if you look just at this black timeline, the 775, it's assuming a balance of zero as the starting balance. So, let's see. And this one, uh, maybe yours will work out with better numbers than mine, but uh, this one's sort of messy, these numbers. The 4% compounded monthly, when I calculate I and N, well, let me go ahead and write out the formula. This is the future value of an ordinary annuity what it's going to do is calculate this amount right here. S equals R times 1 plus I to the N minus 1 all over I. So, so R is the $578. Now I, I think I put my pen down. It looks like I have a point there, doesn't it? There's not a point. It's 4%. Okay. I is 4% compounded monthly. Oh, this is going to be bad. 4, 0.04 over 12. If you punch that into your calculator, you're going to get a non-terminating decimal. Does it go 0 .0, uh, 0 0.003333? So, my math lab won't, if you're, since you're going to have to punch this number in, you can't round it all until the very end. And so I'm, this is one of the times I'm going to leave I as 0 .04 over 12. Now what about N? Well, let's see. Seven years monthly, how many periods would that be? How many total monthly periods? Would that be 7 times 12? So 84. So now plugging in S equals R. And now you begin to see why I say it's going to be sort of ugly. 1 plus I. I can't just do that in my head. I'm going to have to write it as 1 plus 0 0.04 over 12 
close parentheses, raised to the 84th power, minus 1, all over I, that point zero four over 12 in the bottom, you're going to have to have that in parentheses. So this one's going to be a little bit messier to punch in. And let me see if I can blind y'all with the glare. It usually looks okay in the on the video. Parentheses. Oops. Here I'm going to have to. I'm punching in the bracket number, but I got to use the parentheses. One plus point zero four over twelve. Close parentheses raised to the 84th power, subtract 1. So I'm punching in the top part. I'll hit enter. And then I'm going to say divided by that bottom, parentheses 0 0.04 over 12. Close parentheses. Now you can't just round that I to 0 .0033 or something. That won't be precise enough. That's why I've got to use 0 .04 over 12. Maybe you'll be lucky and you'll get something like 6%. The 0 .06 over 12 would work out to just 0 .005. Uh -huh. When you're saying over 12, you're just pushing the bottom by 12. Huh? When you're saying 0 .04 over 12, you're just pushing divide. Divide by 12, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. So let's see. So that bracket number is 96.754. It's sort of hard to see that. Again, the glare is bad on the projector. Sometimes I do know. So that bracket number is actually significant. There were 84 to payments, but with the interest, it was like we had almost 97 payments. Okay. So now I'll multiply this by 578, and the amount in the account at the end of the seven years is 55,923 dollars and 90 cents. 55,923.904, so that rounds to 90 cents on mine. Okay. Yes, but I won't round to the nearest dollar until the very end. The reason it's doing that is it's taking into consideration that maybe your calculator Know, has different programming it might get that you know it might have depending on the model of the calculator it might be off one cent with that rounding okay, that so point always, like, we'll just to the nearest cent yes unless at the, then at the very end it might say round to the newest dollar but even most of the time it still says round to the newest dollar that, I mean round to the newest cent like the one we did earlier problem number six it still says Round to the newest cent. So you just got to not be rounding off anywhere. Just like right here. Don't go 0 .04 divided by 12 and call it 0 .003 or 0 .0033. If you round off like that, you're going to get it wrong. Okay? If you want to use that, you better put in a whole lot of threes, maybe eight threes. That will probably be precise enough. So, we've done the future value of an ordinary annuity. Now we're going to take that $55,923, let me write it down here, and 90 cents, and move it to the new account. Okay. Or maybe it's not a new account, but the account, the, move it to the 5% monthly. To do that, that's periodic compound amount formula. A equals P times 1 plus I to the N. 
you refer to this is as moving the money forward. I'm moving that $55,923.90 forward those seven years. I'm just letting it sit there. Well, let's see. What's I and N? I, 5% monthly, so it's 0 0.05 over 12. Is that a terminating decimal? If I punch in 0 0.05 divided by 12, no, it isn't. Okay, so I'll leave it as 0 0.05 over 12. Now, to get N, well, heck, is N the same? Seven years monthly, N is still 84. Now, I don't think that it's programmed for it's always the same, okay? It might have been, for this one, it just so happened, it's seven years and seven years. It could be something like this one here we did where it was 10 years and seven years, okay? So plugging in the present value, what I'm finding is this amount right here, okay? The present value is at $55,923.90. So A equals $55,923.90. Times 1 plus I, this is one of those times when the I, I'm, I can't do the 1 plus I in my head. I'll just have to leave it as 0 0.05 over 12. And the over 12 is divided by 12, raised to the 84th. I'll clear my calculator and see if I can find a spot doesn't have too much glare. Mm, let me start punching it in so I can see. 55,923.9. Okay. Oh, okay, I won't move it. What the heck did that come from? Okay, so $55,923.90 parentheses 1 plus 0 0.05 over 12. It says 0 0.05 divided by 12. That's how I'm patching it in. Close the parentheses. Raise to the 84th power. So A is 79,302 dollars and 0 0.106, I'm going to go ahead and round this to uh, the nearest cent. So 0 0.11. Okay, so 0 0.11. That's how much money would be in the account at the end of the 15 years if the person didn't then start depositing $775 a month also. Seventy nine three zero two point eleven. Okay. Oh, I moved it. I said I should have. Okay. Any questions up to that point? Now let's take care of that third part. Okay, the future value of an ordinary annuity. Periodic compound amount moves that money forward. Now we're starting a whole separate timeline and we're going to do the uh, future value of an ordinary annuity taking care of that $775 a month at 5% compounded monthly for seven years. And then we'll add those two amounts together. So using this second part, R is $775. Now, I and N are what we have up here. I is 0 0.05 over 12. N is still 84. And 
future value of an ordinary annuity, S equals R times 1 plus I to the N minus 1 all over I. So plugging in. Let me move up some. R is $775. Bracket. 1 plus I to the N minus 1 all over I. I'll punch in the top, hit equal or enter, then divided by that bottom, putting that point zero five over 12 in parentheses, hit equal or enter, and then multiply by uh, 775. What that'll get me is the sum of those, those 84 deposits of $775. So I'm going to clear my calculator. Clear my calculator. Okay, so I'm patching in the top. Parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 12 raised to the 84th power minus 1, enter, divided by parentheses, 0 0.05 divided by 12, Close parentheses, enter, and now multiply by 775, and we have 7775.7, would y'all call that 71? $77,754. value of an ordinary annuity. Then move that money forward using the periodic compound amount formula. Then we use the future value of an ordinary annuity again to get the second series of pay monthly payments. And now we're going to add those two numbers together. Okay, so $77,754.71 plus $79,000 $302.11 gives us, here it is, $157,056.82. That's the amount that you're going to round to the newest dollar. Right? Type in there. How would I round that? It'll be 157,050. Do I leave it as 56 or make it 57 dollars? So one, let me go ahead and punch, write that in. 157,057. 157,000. Uh, $57. Oh, wow. I'm, I hate to say this, but I'm going to I'm gonna do it. Any questions? Okay. Some of those times I hate to ask that. Because, you know, like, where do you begin? Okay. Reminded of a time years ago in graduate school when the instructor asked, is that clear? And I said, I, told, I spoke for the class and said, no, but it's consistent. It's the worst teacher I ever had. But anyway, I'll call it quits now. So you, if, 
Oh, well, thanks for watching if you watch the video.